Okay, so let's just deal with apportionment now. So what am I talking about with apportionment? I'm talking about an organization that has the following maybe in its income statements. It's got sales, factory, 20 million. And then it's got rentals, residential accommodation. And let's imagine that's 5 million. And what do we know about this? The sales are 80% battable, because 20 over 25 is 80%. And rentals for residential accommodation, it's 20% exempt. Okay. So let's just have a look here, guys. There's one of three things that can happen within an organization that's similar to this. Okay. We can buy for the factory. Okay. If we buy for the factory, we can claim 100% of the VAT because the factory is 100% VATable. The next thing that we could do is we could buy for the residential accommodation. I buy a bed for the residential accommodation. I buy furniture for the residential accommodation. Okay. There's no VAT input claim here. Why is there no VAT input? Because it's exempt. And then I could have something in the middle. It's both factory plus residential accommodation. Okay. And I'll give you an example of this. This is the computer used by the CFO. Now the CFO does factory. The CFO does residential accommodation and because he does both you'll be able to claim 80 percent vat on the computer why 80 percent because 80 percent of the sales are for vat so let's have a look at this example it says a limited commenced trading six months ago they built a 100-unit townhouse complex on the beachfront with the intention of generating residential rentals and holiday rentals. Residential, exempt. Holiday, that. All 100 units were owned by the company. 40 units were rented out as residential accommodation. Okay. So 40% is exempt for the units. It says the renting of residential accommodation is an exempt supply, not subject to VAT. These units were fully furnished, and but electricity was paid by individual tenants. 60 units were let out as holiday accommodation. That's VAT. Electricity was to be paid by the company. There's a taxable supply upon which VAT was to be charged. It says based on a budget submitted by the company to SARS, SARS agreed that 60% taxable supplies apportionment be used. So what does that mean? 60% is VAT, 40% is exempt. Okay. Now, in a question, guys, if they do not tell you the apportionment, you've got to use the sales to work it out. But most questions, they will tell you what SARS apportionment is. So let's just go have a look here at these items and decide what we're going to do with them. Residential rentals is all exempt. So that one's going to be exempt. There's not going to be any VAT on it. Holiday rentals is all VATable. So 15 over 115 times 92,000 will be charged. Interest received is exempt. It's a financial service. Interest received. It says furniture inside a residential unit. Proceeds on sale was 11, and the book value was 10. This is all exempt. Why is it all exempt? Because it's inside a residential unit, so it's 100% exempt. It says salaries and wages expense. So it says security and cleaning staff for the complex. Okay. What have we learned with salaries and wages? Not an enterprise please it's not exempt huh? it's not an enterprise electricity holiday letting times 15 over 115 times 100 percent 
electricity common areas that's used by residential and holiday letters. So what are we going to claim? 80% times 3156 times 15 over 115, because it's used by both commercial and residential accommodation. Rates for the whole complex. No VAT. Why? Because it's zero rated. Remember, rates are zero rated. Replacement furniture bought for residential unit to replace damaged furniture. It's residential, therefore, exempt. Bank charges. Bank charges will be for both parts of the business. That's why we claim 80% of the VAT. Refers to a holiday unit. It is 100% for a holiday unit, therefore I can claim all the VAT. And I'll be able to claim 15 over 115 times 100% times 4126. Security company for guarding the whole complex. It's for commercial and residential times 80% times 15 over 115. So I'm just going to look at the question that you've asked. Um, oh, sorry. I'm doing 80%. Sorry, it's supposed to be 60% for everything that I'm doing. I apologize. Sorry. Sorry. Imagine this said 80% with what I'm saying. Sorry. Sorry. I apologize. I've been using 80% instead of 60% while I've been going through the question. Guys, computer bought for the accountant to keep the accounts in records. That computer is used for both parts of the business. So I'd only be able to claim 80% of the VAT on the computer for both parts of the business itself. Okay. So there's all of your solutions and you guys can have a look at that. Okay. Guys, just if you got given a question that looked a little bit like this and they asked you to calculate your input percentage, just remember that's exempt. Fuel is zero rated. Therefore, it's VATable. There's VAT at 0%, so we'd use it. Quick shop sales, there's VAT. Residential units, okay, sorry, this, sorry, this, for letting out shops, there's VAT, sorry. And then 1.6 million for residential units, there's exempt. So what you do is you'd say all the zero rated stuff is VATable. So what's your exempt portion here? It would be 1.6 over eight. 1.6 divided by 8 equals 20%. So you would have 20% VAT that you could claim. Now, the next part of this chapter is disposal of assets where less than 100% input VAT was claimed. Okay. So I'm not going to look at that page. I want to explain to you. So, okay. I'm an accountant. I buy a house, I use 20% of the house for my practice. Let's imagine I bought the house for 2.3 million times 15 over 115 equals 300,000. And I only use a 20% for my practice. So how much VAT did I claim? I claimed 60,000 rands worth of input when I bought it. Okay, let's imagine I sell the house for 5,750,000 5, later. Now, let me just explain how SARS works. SARS says that they want to get output at 100%. So what they do is they say, listen, the output VAT on the sale of the house is 5,750,000. 5, times 15 over 115 times. 100%. And that's going to give you output VAT of 750,000 Rand. Okay. But it's unfair for them to do that because you only claim 20% of the input. So when you have a situation like this, generally in an exam, you will charge output VAT on the 100,000 and then there will be a input claim but what is your input claim based on? The lower of cost or selling price times by 
the VAT that you've got, and there will be an input claim equal to 240,000. Now, the reason that SARS does this is so that they can claim more VAT and get more money from people because they would rather collect output on the 5.75 million and let the other people claim input on the 2.3 million. Okay. And SARS will collect more money by doing it this way. So the general rule is charge output VAT at 100%. And then you get to claim input VAT on the lower of cost, 2.3, or selling price 5.75. So the input VAT claim is on the lower amount, and the output is normally on the bigger amount. So what I just want you to see is, it says here, output VAT, selling price times 100% times 15 over 115. Input VAT, lower of cost or market value times by the percentage not yet claimed. So it says here, if the assets bought for 115, 115 including VAT and claim 40%, your input claim when you bought it would be 40% of the VAT. On disposal, the assets sold for 120. Output is on the big number, but the input VAT is on the lower of cost or market value the amount you've sold it for and you'll claim lower input on it itself. So you get to claim whatever's there. There is an exception to the rule. If something is given as a fringe benefit or there's an insurance claim payout. So with insurance claims, it's involuntary. Someone stole it. You shouldn't be penalized. You shouldn't have to pay that on the 5.75 million when someone stole it from you, when you only bought it for 2.3. It's involuntary. So what the rule is, is as follows, if it is not a fringe benefit or an insurance claim, what's going to happen is that we just use the percentages. So if it's an insurance claim, it says asset bought for 115, including VAT, and you claim 40. So there's your input claim, 115,000 times 40%. On disposal, it says the asset was destroyed in a fire and the insurance company paid out 120. What's going to happen here, guys? output VAT because it's an involuntary disposal. I only claim 40%. I'm only going to charge 40%. Now look at the difference here, guys. The difference here is 6260 minus 6000. And there's only a 260 VAT difference. Over here, it's 9000. Oh, sorry. 15652 minus the 9,000, guys, there's a much bigger difference that's actually happening over there. So you guys need to just understand that they don't want to penalize you, okay, if you're paying a salary to someone or there's an involuntary disposal. But if you choose to sell it of your own accord, output VAT on 100%, input VAT here on the 60 that you didn't claim. And in this way, you get to claim SARS gets far more money when they do something. So you just need to bear that in mind.